bless you, God. Last week, beloved, we continued a series of messages that we uh, started here several weeks ago entitled Reduce Discontent. The theme of this series was Residues of Discontent. This week, we uh, dealt with the third installment of that message. As a matter of fact, that installment was named after the name of the theme, the title of the theme. We call that message as Sabbath Reduce of Discontent. And in that message, we talked about how we got where we are and who is responsible for all of the mess that we're going through in this world. We said it again with a holy angel, superb angel, and endowed Yahweh with four uh, favors, four special, precious favors that cause him to begin to, like my dad used to see, smell himself. Thought he was better than God. He wanted to be God. We, we said that the four incontestable fears Yahweh gave to this angel was first his wisdom. We find that in Kill chapter 20 and verse 11. We also find that Yahweh gave him ah, contestable beauty. The Bible says in Ezekiel 28, 11, uh, that he had, he full of wisdom and perfect beauty. And then we said that the third incontestable favor Yahweh gifted this angel with was his position. Find that in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse number 14, where the text says he walked amongst the stones of fire and he was on the mount of God. He was a covering cherub. God ordained him that way. And then the fourth final was his possession. And we said we found that in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 13, where the Bible says that he was in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was his covering. Oh, but, but verse 16 and 17 of Ezekiel 28, God speaks to this superb angel, this covering cherub, and said, he had his head and his heart lifted up because of his beauty and his wisdom was corrupted because of his brightness. And so God said, I'm going to shut you down. Cast you from amongst the stones of fire. I will send you to the earth. We said that this angel was evicted. He was dismissed out of heaven. And Revelation chapter 12, begin, beginning with verse 7 through 12, tells us how he was evicted and what he is doing now where he is. We say in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 12, we see five revelatory realities that lets us know 
how this angel, this holy angel, became covetous because of his beauty, was cast out of heaven. Uh, we said the first revelatory reality we see is the defeat of the dragon. We see that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and 8. And then next was the dismissal of the dragon from heaven. We see that in Revelation chapter 12, verse number 9. The third we said was the declaration of a defeat and the dismissal of the dragon. And we see that in Revelation chapter number 12 and verse number 10. And the fourth we said was the uh, disenchantment of the dragon and the danger that his disenchantment caused to the earth and the sea. And we see that in Revelation chapter 12, verses 12. And then something happened last Sabbath during the message. When we talked about his disenchantment, we were describing and giving an illustration of a serpent that has his head cut off and that is thrive, uh, 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 just wiggling, uh, 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 thrashing. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. All over the place. And while we were talking about the serpent, that oh, dragon, that serpent, the devil, which deceived the whole world, he attacked our media system. <laughs> And he cut our ear off. Uh, those of you who were watching saw me preach, but you couldn't hear a word because he knew, watch this, that we were coming to fifth revelatory reality. And that is the devotion of the saints and their faithfulness and victory over the devil. And we find that in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, what the Bible says. The Bible says, even though the devil was mad at the woman, mad at the sins, even though Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, fourth revelatory reality, heaven is now rejoice ye heaven, and those that dwell therein, but what? onto the earth and the sea and those that dwell therein because the devil is come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. But even in the midst of that, the fifth revelatory reality lets know that we are victorious because Revelation chapter 12 and 11 say, and they overcame, oh bless by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony, and they love not their lives even on today. So, in that third installment of the message, Reduce of Discontent, we said, no matter whatever happens. And the rest of the sixth vision in the three scenes make up the four scenes of the sixth vision. The sins win. I wish somebody would shout hallelujah. The scenes are victorious. They overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. Oh, beloved, as we delve into fourth installment, I'm going to call your attention to the passages of Scripture that we will use as the backdrop for the word God has for us this morning. I know you got your Bibles with you, and 
So I want you to find Revelation chapter 12. We're going to go back there. And of course, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 14, which is our uh, thematic text. We've been reading that. Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 14, over and over and over again. You should know that now by heart if you've been following us. But our sermonic passage today is going to be Revelation chapter 12, verse 13 to 17, and Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Here it is. Let's go. Get your Bibles. Follow along. I'm going to be reading out of the King James Version. You can choose your favorite version of the Bible. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, How art thou cut down from heaven, O Lucifer? How art thou fallen? Excuse me. How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? And here is why that discontent, because thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Have mercy. I will sit also. Upon the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I will ascend above the clouds. Above the ice of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This was his aspiration. To overthrow the divine government. Now turn with me to Revelation chapter 12 verse 13. 17, which is the second scene in the sixth vision. And then we're going to read Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, which is also a part of the second scene in the sixth vision. Oh, excuse me, the third scene in the sixth vision. Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. And it reads, when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth. What did he do? He persecuted the woman who brought forth the man child. And that was given to the one two wings of a great eagle that she should fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for time and times and half of time from the fate of the serpent. Now you would have thought the serpent would just stop. But no, and the serpent cast out of his mouth, water as a flood after the woman. Oh, bless God. Because he intended this flood to carry the woman away. But the Bible says, but the earth helped the woman. Hallelujah. The earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And all hell broke loose. <laughs> the Bible says in verse 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the rim of her seed. Listen carefully, listen carefully at this part, which keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Oh, beloved. Uh, I, I can stop and start preaching because I'm, I'm just, I, I want this horse to come out of the barn. But let me take you to Revelation chapter 13 
and verse 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. John said, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. And I saw beasts rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his head, ten crowns. And upon uh, his Upon his horn, ten crowns upon his head, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard. And his feet as the feet of a bear. And his mouth was as a mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his feet in great authority. I, I'm going to pray again before we preach this message because I know the devil doesn't want us to hear this word. But we bind him right now in the name of Yeshua. Father, there's a man, a woman, a boy, a girl somewhere listening to hear this truth in the book of Revelation. And the enemy is going to do everything to fight us. But in the name of Yeshua, Amen. We buy him right now. And we lose this atmosphere to race and engulf your presence, God. And I pray that our equipment will work right and that the audio and the video and the sounds will go out and your people hear and will believe and be safe. In Yeshua's name we pray. Well, my friends, I have struggled with this message. Elder Manuska, I, 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 I have had to deal with the reality that I had to preach this message in this season, the first day of, or the first Sabbath in this new year, 2021, when we have been transitioned, beloved. From 2020, with all of its vicissitudes, all of its struggles, all of its ups and downs, more downs than up. All of the deaths we have passed, 350,000 Americans that have lost their lives. And, and, and Dr. Uh, 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 Fauci is saying this, if things not work out or oh, not obedient and observing to the cautions of social distancing, we're going to have at least 5,000 dead every day or every week. I mean, I say every day. Yes, yes, every day. You know, and, and so, Sister Adam, the temptation this morning is to come to the people of God and say, I got a word from the Lord, and that word is say goodbye to 2020. Uh, the temptation this morning, Minister McCarter, is to say that 2020 and all of its pains and all of its problems and all of its troubles and all of its terror is behind us, and now you can high five. Two people and say, this is the year of my destiny. This is the year of my promise. I am getting ready to walk into my promise. That's really what I want to say to you. Because it's easy. With all that we've gone through in 2021, beloved, to say to you, put your boxes of Kleenex away. Now, Yahweh is getting ready to wash your face and wipe tears. No more crying. No more tears. No more pain. 2021 is going to be a year of refreshment and renewal. I, I, wish, I wish that was the message that I had to say to you. Oh, beloved, the message that Yahweh has given me to bring to his people. This first Sabbath of 2020 is it will get worse before it gets better. If you're looking for a tag, a title, 
this message, this fourth installment today, it is, it will get worse before it gets better. Why, why do you say that, preacher, with all that we have gone through? Are you saying to me we should not look for a better 2021? And I'm saying to you, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I came today to say to you is you can look for whatever you want to look for, but the word of God says it will get worse before it gets better. Well, beloved, when you look in the first scene in the sixth vision and the fourth revelatory reality, we see that word in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14, but heaven is rejoicing, rejoice ye heavens and all that are in them, but woe, Whoa, that's an alarm, beloved. Woe unto the earth and the sea and the inhabitants thereof, because the devil is coming down unto you, having great wrath. For he knows that he has but a short time. Oh, beloved, I stopped by to tell you that Jesus uh, made this clear in uh, Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse 6 and 7. He said, it's going to get rich. You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be pestilence in diverse places. There's going to be uh, earthquakes and there's going to be famines. Uh, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But the good news is, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. It will eventually get better. I wish somebody was listening to me today. Oh, beloved, this uh, vision found in the sixth set of visions and the second, third, and fourth scene that covers between Revelation chapter number 12 and verses 13 through 17 and Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 through 18 is a historical event that is intended Help us know how Yahweh is going to bring this thing called sin to an end. It is intended to help us understand uh, that there are some things that will happen historically to the world, uh, but Yahweh doesn't want us uh, to be fearful. He wants to encourage us by giving us this sneak peek, preview this. Uh, entail that we should be faithful instead of fearful. And so the Bible says that when the devil knew, when he saw and recognized that he was no longer in heaven, he decided he was going to take his anger off on the woman. In 27 AD, when historically Lord and Savior Yeshua was nailed on that cross on Golgotha's hill, and before he hung his head, he asked for some uh, drink to clear his throat and threw his head back and shouted, Tell us, die, it is finished. Right at that very moment, every access the devil had, heaven was cut off. He was totally missed, missed, and never again allowed to come back into heaven. But before that, access going in and out, you understand or you remember the story of Job when the sons of God came before him, Satan also came to represent earth. But when Jesus died, his access to heaven was cut off. And when that happened, beloved, 
Bible says that the dragon persecuted the woman who brought forth the man child. Watch this. I'm, I'm going to do some teaching and then a little and then some teaching. So get your notes, get your pad, because this is very important. Let's, let's, let's go to school and study this morning. Thing you notice, if you talk with me through the teachings of this text, is uh, the first strategy of the devil's uh, warfare. Beloved, the devil has four war strategies. We'll deal with two of them today, and this week we will deal with the other two. But let me just give you a heads up. The devil's four war strategies are polarization. Somebody say polarization. Persecution. Somebody say persecution. Porpory or piety. Somebody say porpory or piety. And then the fourth and the last one is what I call the three-head serpent of poverty, popularity, and prosperity. And that's what we're going to be dealing with next Sabbath, so you don't want to miss that. But the first thing that David did was he polarized in Manuska, the church. When I he made war with the woman. You no know, woman represents the church. Oh, bless God. Thank you. Uh, uh, he just, uh, Holy Ghost just tweeted to me. It was not part of, of my message. But, 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 but watch, watch this. The Bible says, oh, bless you, God. Bless you, God. That the devil uh, made war with the woman, persecuted the woman who brought forth a man child. Do you know, beloved, that Jesus, Yeshua, is the only person who has lived on earth who created his mother before he allowed his mother to give him birth? I wish somebody would. He, 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 he is the creator, John says in John chapter 1 and verse 2 and 3, that all things were created by him, and without him there was not anything that was created, or that is, or, or, or that was created. He, 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 he created Mary, this young uh, virgin Hebrew girl, and then he said, after I create you, I will embow myself in your womb and let you give me birth. And we see this right yeah, in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 13. The church was given, uh, was created Jesus Christ because the church are followers of Jesus. But Jesus is birthed by the, uh, the message of Jesus is out by the church. The word of Jesus, the witness of Jesus is carried out by the church. And so the Bible says that when the dragon saw that he was just out of heaven, he persecuted the church because the church had given birth to the man child. We know that that man child is Jesus because in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15, when Adam and Eve sinned and Yahweh came walking through the cool of the day in the garden and he discovered, oh no, he had discovered because he knew where they were. But when he asked them, what have you done? And they said, we ate the fruit, we disobeyed and we're hiding ourselves. The Bible says that he issued out three different punishments, uh, and one of them was a covenant, and that covenant is found in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent, uh, and uh, the serpent will crush or heal or bruise his heel. And that meant that Jesus will defeat Satan, but Jesus will have to die on the cross. So when that happened, beloved, Satan got mad. And the first thing he did was use the word 
kingpin of polarization. What is polarization to divide people against themselves? When the church, the infant church first started, one of the big problems they had was a doctrine of problem because they were beginning to form the doctrines of the church in the second and third century AD. And we had one church called the Holy Catholic Church. Now, don't get scared of that word because Catholic means one, universal. But then because of the polarization, doctrinal uh, issues and, 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 and wars they begin to have, the, have, the church was split into two. You had the Eastern Church and the Western Church. You had the Greek Orthodox Church, and then you had the Church of Rome. That was the first thing that ever did. He polarized the church. Oh, but beloved, the Bible says that the church went into the wilderness. The church went into hiding. Stay with me now in Revelation chapter 12, and we are now at verse 14 where the Bible says that the devil uh, uh, spilled this, 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 this uh, uh, water and water in prophecy, beloved, or sea means people or confusion. The Bible says that the serpent cast out of his mouth when the woman was gone into the wilderness. The people were being, were being terrorized and they went underground. That's what the Bible means, that the church was given two wings of a strong eagle and it went into the wilderness. The devil made that wilderness or populated area. Uh, the devil made that wilderness uh, populated with confusion. Whenever you see C, it means people or confusion. Oh, beloved, the Bible says the earth swallowed. And whenever you see earth, it means a scantily populated area, just like a wilderness. There's not too many people there. The saints of God were able to hide from the devil because the earth opened uh, his mouth and swallowed uh, all of the confusion that the devil brought. And then the devil shift gear. And the Bible says in verse 17, now, watch this, watch this. First, the devil was mad at the whole church. He persecuted the woman, the whole church. But when he saw that the earth swallowed the water, the flood gushed out of his mouth, and the woman was saved. Then the devil got mad and said, this is what I do. I will go after the remnant of her seed. There it is. I told you we're going to do a little teaching here. Listen carefully. The seed woman, according to, Revelation, according to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, is Yeshua, Jesus, the Lord. A remnant of the seed of the woman is those of us who are followers of Jesus. Remnant means what's left over. Oh, I wish somebody would hear me today. So we are the leftover of the seed, the remnant of the seed, beloved. But here's the devil's new war strategy. This time, he's not just fighting the war. He's now fighting the remnant of the seed of the woman, but wait a minute, he's feeding the remnant of the seed of the woman 
Elder McCoy, who has two specific identity. What are the identities? They keep the commandments of God. Have mercy, Jesus. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's not the devil. The devil is not fighting everybody. Don't get it twisted. He's not fighting the whole church. So when I say to you, beloved, it will get worse before it gets better. I'm not talking to anybody that goes to church uh, and anybody that's a member of a church. I'm talking about somebody who has these two identifying marks. Because Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, specific. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with her seeds uh, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's us, beloved. As those of us who have made up our mind and are convicted that God's Ten Commandments have not been done away with. And that specifically the fourth commandment, which is God's title deed for being the creator of the heavens and the earth, according to Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Those of us who believe that we're not saved by keeping the commandments, but we are saved by grace through faith, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Because we are saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, Yahweh has sent his Holy Spirit to empower us to be loyal to him. By keeping his commandments, we yet have our faith totally and fully complete in the efficacious life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. The commandments are done away with. And the lie of the devil is to let us know that because Jesus died, we don't have to keep the commandments. Beloved, if we don't have to keep the men, then why is the second scene in the sixth vision found in Revelation 12, verse 17, telling us that the dragon is not just mad at everybody, he's mad at those who are keeping commandments and have the faith of Jesus. Devil ain't mad at everybody. Because he started with this polarization, and, and, and some people bought into it and to believe his life. The devil wants us to think, beloved. That Jesus, who came to die, to bring us back into right relationship with God, has now empowered us to be disobedient to God. It doesn't make no sense. And Jesus knew that. He knew that the devil was going to come up with that lie. So you know what Jesus did? He didn't tell Peter or Paul and James and John to say it. He said it himself. Go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. You will hear the word of Jesus. Think not that I came to destroy the laws and the prophets. So stop there. He said, I did not come to destroy the Lord's laws and the prophets, but to fulfill it. If somebody said, I didn't come to destroy this, and then you say, well, they destroyed it. Come on. You don't even have to be elementary school GED certificate holder to know that. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. That word fulfill, beloved, means to authenticate, to validate, to pronounce it, to punctuate it. Oh, I've God today, beloved, 
that Jesus did not come to destroy the law and that the law is done away with. That those of us who are remnant, are remnants of the seed of the woman, we will be persecuted. The devil will put us through hell because we keep in the commandments of God. And we have testimony of Jesus Christ. And so I told you I was going to give you two war strategies that the devil used. The first is polarization. The second is persecution. So the Bible says that he decided he was going to persecute the church. He waged this war of persecution. But the devil is smart. Well, no, he's not really smart. He's a trick. He would love to have somebody else to do his dirty work. Because he doesn't want to know that he is the uh, culprit. All of our pains and our sufferings and our trouble. Don't blame Yahweh for COVID-19. Don't blame Yeshua for all of the people that are suffering and dying around the world, the world from, from this virus. The devil is responsible for it. But he always throws the rock and hides his hand. He did it in the Garden of Eden. You know, he didn't come himself to our forebears, Adam and Eve, that God was lying. If they ate the fruit, they would not die. You know what he did? He got him a hit man called the serpent. He used the serpent to deceive Adam and Eve. And now he goes back to his old trick. Because when he realized that polarization wasn't working, he said, well, I'm going to just beat them down. But I won't let them know I'm doing it. And so he got a hit man called the, Rome, uh, 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 the Roman Empire. Pagan Rome was who the devil hired to persecute the seed of the woman, the remnant of her seed. And Rome, beloved, tore up the church, hung people on crosses, threw them in lion's dens, cut off their head, burned them at the stake. Oh, but guess what? The more Rome persecuted the church, the more they suffered the people of God, the more people joined the church. Oh, I thank God this morning for Isaiah 54 and verse 17 that tells me that no weapon, oh, bless his name, that is formed against me shall prosper. Oh, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, Yahweh say he will condemn because I'm a heritage of God and you are a heritage of God. And so Rome, pagan Rome, persecuted the church, but it didn't work. I know somebody's looking at me cross eyed right about now and saying, well, preacher, uh, where in the Bible do we find where Pagan Rome persecuted the church. Well, come with me to Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1 and 2. And also Daniel chapter 7 and verse 7 and 8. Beloved, if you want to understand the apocalyptic books, the last day revelations found in Daniel and in Revelation you have to know the meaning of symbols because they are reading, written in coded language. Uh, this is privileged information. Uh, uh, this is classified. That's a new word we've been hearing lately. Classified intelligence. It's not for everybody. It's for those who are loyal and faithful, those who keep the commandments of God. 
have the testimony of Jesus. And so, so, so I, I'm going to take you to Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 1 and 2. And then later on, I'll take you to Daniel chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. But let me just give you some definitions of prophetic symbols so when we read, you can understand and you will know how Rome came into this. Whenever you see the word sand in Daniel or Revelation in the prophetic apocalyptic books is talking about a uh, 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 a uh, populated area, a uh, 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 a big city, New York City, maybe or uh, Chicago, a uh, populated. Now I'm not saying New York and Chicago are that, but I'm just giving you a, a, an example. Populated city. Whenever you see the word beast, now there are two words that are used in the apocalyptic literature and in Greek for Greek uh, uh, for beast. One is the word zoom. And whenever you see zoom in Revelation, because in English we don't have no, any differences, we just use the word beast. But whenever you see beast, as you will see it in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5, four, uh, 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 the four beasts before the throne of God, the Greek word used there is the word zoom, and it talks about living creatures. It comes from the root word zoe, which means to live. But then you will see another Greek word, therion. Therion is the other word for beast, and it means kingdoms. It means kingdoms. So now we got sand as a populated area. We got therion beast in Revelation chapter 13. And it means uh, 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 kingdoms. And then you will see a uh, sea. I already told you that. Sea means uh, people or confusion. And then you will see horns. Horns means governing bodies. Whenever you see horn in Revelation 13, it's talking about governing bodies. And then you will see crown. Crown will talk about little kingdoms or smaller kingdoms. Like in the United States, we have the United States. That's uh, the horn. And then you have the state of Louisiana. That's the crown. That's smaller governing bodies. You get my drift. Okay? And, and, and so John says... In, in, in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1, I stood upon the sand of the sea, the populated area of where there were people that were confused. Okay, go with me slowly. And I saw a beast, a kingdom, rising up, out of the sea, out of the confused people or people with confusion. And this beast had 10 horns. It had 10 governing bodies. And upon the horns, the 10 governing bodies, 10 crowns, it had 10 smaller kingdoms after the 10 uh, governing bodies. He said, and the dragon, now you know who the dragon is, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Give his power and his seat and great authority to this beast, to this kingdom. Oh, beloved, when we look at pagan Rome, we will find out that pagan Rome was started, was founded by Romulus, who was a twin brother to Romulus. Romulus, the twin brother to Romulus, was the founder and the first king of the empire of Rome. 
And he lived from 753 AD or BC, excuse me, 753 BC to 715 BC. He was the first king of Rome, Romulus. And he was followed by six other kings. The last one being Tarquinus Superbus. Tar, uh, Tarquinus Superbus was the last king of the Roman kingdom. Okay, and he lived from 534 BC to 510 BC. This man only lived for 24 years. And he was already king and ruler. He was the last king of Rome before Rome turned into a republic. Okay, so for seven kingdoms, like Daniel said, uh, 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 excuse me, like, like John said in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, this beast that had seven heads and ten horns, uh, uh, now we have this, 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 uh, this seventh king, Tarquinus Superbus or Superbus. He, 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 he dies and Rome now becomes a republic. And you, you, you know, we said that on top of the horns were 10 crowns, 10 smaller kingdoms. The republic was divided into 10 kingdoms, smaller kingdoms. Here they are, the Anglo-Saxon, okay, the Franks, okay, the alumni, okay, the Lombards, okay, the, the Ostrogoths, the Burgundies, the Heruli, the Visigoths, the Suevis, and the Vandals. Those 10 ancient smaller kingdoms made up the Roman Republic. Are you still with me? I, I told you I'm going to do a little teaching. Now, something happened to these 10 kingdoms. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 7 and 8. And we will see what happened to these 10 kingdoms. Daniel and Revelation are the same thing. Daniel sees it 500 years earlier. And then John sees it 500 years later. John sees the same thing. He sees one beast with different heads. Daniel sees four beasts, but then the fourth beast. When you look at Daniel chapter 7, and verse 7, Daniel said, after this, I saw in the night vision a fourth beast. And this beast, Daniel said, was very daily. He said it, it, it was terrible and it was strong. He said, and this beast had an iron teeth. And with that teeth, it devoured and it broke into pieces and it stamped the residue with his feet. He said, this beast, the Roman Empire was so strong that it just devoured and it, it just broke into pieces and it stamped the residue with his feet. He said, and then he considered uh, these ten horns. He said, and in the midst of these tent horns, in verse 8, he said, there arose a little horn, and before this little horn was plucked up, three of the horns that was before it. Daniel says, and this little horn, <laughs> have mercy, had the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, I need to let you know that what Daniel 
is talking about is a real historic event and you can go Google it and you can check it out for yourself. I told you that Rome had these 10 smaller kingdoms. Now, when this little horn, which is uh, uh, another governing body, came up, he said that this horn plucked up from the root to, to pluck up from the root prophetically means to be extinct. There's nothing there left to grow. He said he plucked up three of the horns that were before it. Which three horns were plucked up? The Hirali, the Ostagovs, and the Vandals. We don't hear about them anymore. But Rome started with 10, three of them gone because this little horn comes out. I'm going to tell you about this little horn in detail next week. You don't want to miss it. And now we have seven left, seven horns. And these seven horns are existing today, beloved. There are the Anglo-Saxon, which is Britain or England, the Franks, which is France, the uh, Burgundies, which is uh, Switzerland, uh, the Lombards, which is uh, Italy, the Illumina, which is Germany, the Servies, which is Portugal, and the Visigoths, which is Spain. Before they became uh, Great Britain and France and Germany and Italy and Spain and Portugal and 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 uh, uh, these these different names that we have today, they were the alumni, the Lombards, the Visigoths, the Serbs, the the the. Uh, uh, Anglo-Saxons, the 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 the, 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 the they, they, they had those names, but now their names are changed. And if you listen lately, you you heard of uh, Britzik, right? It was them trying to come back together. But and I'm not preaching on that today. But if you read in another place of Daniel, where the king Nebuchadnezzar sees a dream in Daniel chapter two, and that dream is the same thing as what we see in Revelation with this beast, but this time it's an image. The last part of that dream is the ten toes, and the Bible said they're mixed with iron and clay, and they can come together. Let me tell you, when Yahweh said you can do it, I don't care who you are. And everybody was worried. Oh, you know, Brit Britain is leaving the European Union. <laughs> and everybody crying. You may cry all you want because that has been prophesied. They cannot hold it together. Oh, beloved. I told you it's going to get worse before it gets better. But here's the good news. Rome persecuted the church. Rome took the church to task the woman and remnant of her seed. All oh, but Rome is not existing today. She is broken up, but you know who is still existing? The remnant, oh, bless God, of the seed of the woman. We are still here. Rome is gone as a republic. Rome is gone as an empire. Rome is gone, but the church of the law, Jesus Christ, is still here. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so I want you to know that if you are one of the remnant with these identities, keeping the commandments of God and having the faith or the testimony of Jesus Christ, you may as well Put your war clothes on. Turn to your neighbor and say, put your war clothes on. Because the enemy is not done yet. He's going to come at you. You may as well just go make a big sign and put on the devil, trouble, problems here. 
I live. This is where I live. You don't have to go looking for me because I'm telling you right now in the name of Yahweh, in the name of the Lord, that the enemy will come after you. Many of you can testify when you were out there in the world doing everything you were big and bad enough to do. You didn't have some of the problems you are having today because you decided I will follow thee, my Savior. Wheresoever my lot may be, whether I go with, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I followed thee. When you decided to do that, all hell brings break loose on you. Don't be surprised. It's the devil that's coming out of uh, uh, against you. He came against the church. Uh, he came through uh, the pagan Rome. And he came to destroy the church. But no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. I want you to know that you don't have to be afraid, that you don't have to worry because we will make it through. I told you in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, they overcame. Hey, let me switch that. We overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the of our testimony. So this is what I want to say to the devil. You you were going to break me, but what you didn't know was what you did build me up. You thought you were going to hurt me, but what you didn't know was what you did cost me a hurry toward the cross. You thought you were going to scare me, but what you didn't know was what you did was made me to take a stand for Jesus Christ. You thought I was going to be I was going to die, but what you didn't know was I had been delivered. This was intended to kill me, but it has kept me on my knees uh, and close to the Lord. I stopped by to tell somebody today that I'm a victor. I'm a winner. Victory is mine. Yes, it's going to get worse uh, before it gets better, but I'm on the winning side. Uh, I'm on the victorious side uh, because Rome was crushed uh, and the devil will be crushed. You want me to give you a little good news? Uh, as I get ready to go to my seat hey 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 the dragon is defeated and because the dragon is defeated sin will be uh, 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 obliterated yes that's what I said and because sin will be obliterated sinners will be liberated and the saints will be evacuated Yeshua will one day be inaugurated and the character of Yahweh will be exonerated. He is not the problem. He is not the cause of your pain or your problem. It's the devil. It's the dragon. But we win. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Not tomorrow, but victory today is mine. I told Satan, Get thee behind me because victory today is mine. Hey, he's going to keep me under the shadow of his wings. He's going to carry me because he that had begun this good work within me will see it until the day of Lord. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forevermore of his saving grace on the streets of glory there to sing my praise all my tears all my troubles are gone home at last ever to rejoice I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus one day do you want to see him do you want to know him then hang in there it's gonna get worse before it gets better but we will win we have won somebody say yes say yes say yes say yes victory 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 and the dragon 
was rough with a woman when to make war with the remnants of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ but they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony and the love not their life unto the death oh beloved take courage no matter what 2021 brings you have faith in God because you are on the winning side in Yeshua's name Oh, Yahweh, I pray right now for that person who do not know you in the saving of their soul. I pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl. Oh, Holy One, I pray that you will touch their heart right now. I pray today in the name of Yeshua, God, that if they are not kidding, in your holy Sabbath, if they believe this lie that the Lord of God, His Ten Commandments laws are done away with, that this word today, God will let them know that there's a lie from the pit of hell, but that the devil is mad at those who keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh God, may they give their heart to you today and may this word find a place in their spirit. Save, we pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. burn within us as he spoke with us by the way you were blessed by the pastor's message today unmute yourself and let him know how grateful you are for that message and how thankful you are that God is so good to us amen an thank incredible you, word Pastor Wegar incredible Hallelujah. Hallelujah. thank you Pastor Wegar for letting God use you and be courageous with it thank you God be the glory thank you for the message amen, amen. amen. A powerful message, Pastor. Powerful. powerful, courageous message. Beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 This is that time for us to take up our offering. But before we do that, every first Sabbath of the year, we introduce our new theme for the year. And I just want to introduce the theme for 2021. I'm going to give you the scripture. We always choose a scripture to go with that theme. The theme for 2021 is life of transformation and devotion in 2021. A life of transformation and devotion in 2021. Our text is found in Romans chapter 12, verse 22, where Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye, here it is, transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye present that which is holy and acceptable in the perfect will of Yahweh. That's our annual 
theme text. So you need to write that down. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And our theme is a life of transformation and devotion in 2021. God bless you. Now, if you've been blessed by this message and the ministry of this church, my friends, we need you to be a blessing to us. You are a part of us. You are with us. And as we are ushered to this brand new year, we want you to start with us in financial and intercessional support of this church, this ministry, and the ministers, ministers and members of this church. And so today I'm asking you to go to our website. You will see it on the screen. The address BerlinBatonRouge.com. Click on the uh, electronic giving, the online giving button. And you can give your tithe and your offering. The tithe is 10% of your increase, whatever God blesses you with. And it doesn't stay at this church. It goes to our conference where all of the churches in the conference send their time and the funds are used to pay the pastors, teachers, and the workers of the conference. But the offering, we stays here. It's what we use to pay our electric bill, our water bill, our uh, staff keep up our campus. So we're asking that you liberally and give joyfully, and Yahweh will bless you. But if you don't want to do it online and you want to uh, send it snail mail, you can mail it to, and the address is also on the screen. The Seventh day Adventist Church at 4555 Fairfield Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 708. Zero two. I'm going to pray right now. Yahweh will bless you as you prepare to give so liberally. Yahweh, I pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that has a heart for your kingdom and for your purpose and is giving to this ministry here at 4555 Fairfields Avenue. God bless them with health. Bless them with peace and quality, prosperity, protection. God, they're going, they're coming, their homes. And then God bless their finances. May these offerings and these tithes go to the othering of the work of the gospel. We pray in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. bow our heads and close our eyes as we parry our benediction. Not unto him who is able to keep you from falling, but to present you faultless before the presence of glory with exceeding joy. To him, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.
God bless you, my friends. We will see you on Wednesday evening at 6 30 Central Standard Time for our hour Power Plus or next Sabbath at the same time, 11 o'clock a.m. for our worship experience. Be blessed.